So in this lecture we will talk about circular time shifting property in the context of DFT. DFT stands for discrete Fourier transform. First we will look at the generalized form of the input signal of a DFT analysis block. Then we will discuss about circular time shifting. It's a functional representation and graphical representation. <coughs> so here we will see we will see the comparison of two discrete time Fourier analysis tools. One is discrete time Fourier series, another is discrete Fourier transform. As you can see, the type of input signal for discrete time Fourier series is discrete periodic whereas for DFT that is to be discrete finite durations and here we are considering that uh, periodic, uh, the period value of the periodic signal is capital N and here we are considering the discrete finite uh, signal finite duration is capital N. So the analysis equation takes a form of summation n equals to 0 to one xn kernel function and the central part of the analysis equation for dft is basically same as the dtfs in case of dtfs one additional scaling factor one upon n it uh, is present here synthesis equation both of the equation takes a similar form spectrum type dtfs and dft both of the Fourier analysis technique produces discrete spectrum and both of them contains n number of samples. So now the relationship between DTFS coefficients and DFT coefficients is uh, just one scaling factor uh, that is 1 upon n. Now if we just talk about uh, DFT and input signals so in general the input signals are are generally these are long data sequence and uh, once we want to compute the dft of the input signals we generally frame into smaller section already we had a discussion in fourier analysis part 2 lecture so here we are considering that uh, it is uh, any arbitrary ith frame data which contains a number of samples then we are passing through dft block to get the corresponding dft spectrum now if we consider that uh, we are in the signal frame that means and from there we are looking uh, towards our dft block so we are supposed to be ready with n sample points to take entry to the dft block now the same thing if we start considering from DFT analysis block and try to look it back to the signal itself how it takes a look before going to that just uh, do a analysis that this particular DFT analysis central equation which is n equals to 0 up to capital N minus 1 xn and the Kandel function it directly gives DFT coefficients but now if we multiply 1 upon n scaling factor this analysis output that would produce DTFS coefficient now we can see the say the single block can have two different outputs but it has only one common input that is xi which has been taken from any arbitrary frame of the input long data sequence which is not essentially to be periodic but uh, this is the sequence of finite durations which is a criteria of DFT analysis discrete and finite durations so now if uh, we try to generalize the input to the DFT analysis block that x of x sub i that is frame data it can be represented as a xp signal 
within an interval 0 to n minus 1. What is xp? xp is shown over this picture that xp represents it's a periodic signal and uh, how this periodic signal can be formed? This can be formed just by repeating that uh, frame data x of i. x of i is this particular segment. Now we are repeating these segments the both the sides. So it becomes a periodic signal and the relation xp can be directly found in terms of xi data the special kind of operation within this argument which is called modular operation so now we are generalizing that at the input of the dft essentially we are taking a finite duration frame but dft analysis block assumes this frame is repeated over the time but that was not the actual situation if we try to understand the modular operation uh, so we have taken a clear view of capital n equals to 8 that means ith frame contains 8 sample points within its frame these are represented by x0 up to x7 so now this right hand side block is the next to ith frame next ith frame which has been repeated during this uh, generalized form and this is previous frame this is the frame which is coming from this particular section and this is the relation how we can form x of phi for any n values which can be represented in terms in terms of xi frame data now the algorithm say that if n means this argument if it is a non negative number this is simple the modular division of small n by capital N. That means divide this small f, small n by capital N and get the remainder value. Now, if we consider let's say any number, n equal, small n equals to 9. So, if we put this number here, so that definitely satisfies this if condition that f is a non negative number. So, what is the value? What is the value of? Angular, angular bracket 9 sub i sub 8 this is equals to 9 modular division by 8 that should be equals to 1 so that means xp at 9 can be represented at x of i at 1 that's why this is x1 this x1 is coming from this xi frame data so this x2 is coming from that data so this will automatically repeat now if we consider this argument value n equals to any negative number let's say n equals to minus 3 so we have to go for this condition n equals to minus 3 that means we have to consider a p value which has been taken from integer set it should be taken such that this n plus p into capital n must be a positive number so now if it is so Positive means it should be uh, non negative, rather. It should be, uh, it may be equal to S. So now, uh, if it is so, if n equals to minus 3, so we, as n equals to capital 8, so we can consider p equals to 1, so that we can have this number as a non negative. So minus 3 plus 8, that is equals to 5, 5 modular division 8, that should be equals to 5 itself. So that's why this is x5. now linear time shifting as you already formed the generalized input of dft block which is called as xp and it has a form of this the blue box the blue window is representing this xi sequence now we wish to apply a linear time shifting of this data sorry on this data towards the left by m sample points that means we will shift the complete sequence minus infinity to plus infinity towards left by m point that would produce a new periodic sequence x sub s which can be represented mathematically in terms of xp by this argument capital plus capital m if we uh, if 
we apply a shift towards the right by m sample point this some uh, this uh, symbol would be uh, negative now there are two objectives number one what should be the new sequence which is coming inside of this block from block or window from which extending from n equals to 0 to capital n minus 1 which is represented by x tilde sub i and how this x tilde sub i relates to xi now if we just take a careful look we can see if we consider m equals to capital m equals to 3 and if we apply left shifting by three sample points so from this blue window the first three sample will come out and uh, from the next window first three sample will take entry to this blue box in the new data frame which is represented by x tilde i so in this connection we can develop the idea of circular type shifting that means if we apply this linear shifting on this scale how we can look this new data frame as a circular shifting so this central frame blue highlighted frame was xi now we apply a left shifting the linear scale by m equals to three sample points it effectively means we are connecting a feedback connections outside this data buffer from left to right it means if we apply linear shifting towards left through this data frame so if any sample points come out from the left of this data frame that will appear at the end of the data frame so if we do it for three samples so first x0 then x1 finally x2 will come out so x2 will be appeared at the last and uh, the next to x2 will become to the first to the data frame so this is the x tilde and that can be represented in terms of xi by this expression small n plus the value of m and similarly if we apply right shifting that means if we apply right shifting towards these directions this effectively uh, it is a connection that outside the data buffer we are taking a feedback connections from right connecting back to the left and if any samples coming out from this side this will appear at the front the data frame and thus we will get this new sequence while capital m equals to 3 so as it is a circularly rotating the data through the frame that's why it is called circular time shifting and that is nothing but the equivalent of linear time shifting over the scale now how graphically we can represent any particular data frame xi let's say n equals to capital n equals to 8 that means the finite length sequence the finite length value is 8 and the sequence name is x so we can represent xn to a disk representation let's say this is a disk and on the disk on the uh, boundary we are placing n number of points n number of points not necessarily that should be equidistance but uh, it is a representation so just inside the boundary we are writing the values of small n n equals to 0 1 2 in anti clockwise fashion and uh, just outside the boundary we will write the sample so if you do that this is equals to x0 for n equals to 0 for n equals to 1 it should be x1 that way we can go up to x sub 7 and the question is if we apply left shifting to the data in the linear scale as we have seen if we apply left shifting the data and we plotted circularly only these sections what would happen now if we apply left shift so what does it mean it is equivalent to a clockwise rotation by m points and this is mathematically represented by this expression already we have seen as because the value of m equals to 3 for this specific uh, 
uh, example m equals to 3 so inside the boundary we are writing the value of small n 0 to 7 anti clockwise direction so if we consider n equals to 0 and put it there 0 plus 3 and modular division with 8 that means it is equals to 3 so that's why it is x3 so if we consider this one let's say n equals to 5 so if it is 5 5 plus 3 equals to 8 modular division with 8 that is x0 if it is equals to 6 6 plus 3 equals to 9 9 modular division 8 its remainder value is 1 that's why it is x1 so this is the circular representation and this is called graphical representation of a data or circularly shifting data sequence similarly if we apply right shifting this is equivalent to this uh, circular graphical representation in point anti clockwise rotation and the mathematical relation is x within argument angular bracket n minus 3 modulo n modulo 8 so if you start think uh, realizing let's say n equals to 1 so if it is 1 that should be minus 3 so 1 minus 3 equals to minus 2 it is going to be the negative number so we have to consider such a value of p so that complete argument within the angular bracket should becomes to be positive so we can consider p equals to 1 so this is minus 2 plus 8 equals to 6 6 modular division 8 equals to 6 itself. that's why it is x6 thus you can find out this and if we just try to <coughs> realize directly from this uh, original sequence that means if we take three left shifting anti-clockwise mean if we apply right shifting the anti-clockwise it is equivalent to three point anti-clockwise rotation so x2 will after one shifting it will go here after that here after that here so this sequence will becomes to this point will be corresponding to x0 so we can see x0 is that now this this is the summarization of the circular shifting and its complete representation so there is a technique which is called reflection reflection means this is the mathematical operation this basically operation which involves in circular representation that is a circular reverse representation that means if we go back we uh, try to find out its uh, reflection sequence so this should be x0 this should be x1 x2 so we are writing instead of anti-clockwise direction we have to write down in clockwise direction but n value will be going in this particular fashion anti-clockwise if it is a left shifting by m so we have seen this is clockwise rotation clockwise rotation for left shifting for right shifting it is anti-clockwise rotation we have seen anti-clockwise rotation and for a specific term x within argument angular bracket capital m minus n its modulo division by capital n so this is equivalent to original sequence x first apply circular reverse shifting then take m point anti-clockwise rotation that would form x within angular bracket capital m minus n order revision n so this is very important for circular convolution we'll talk about this particular technique in the next presentation the next topic we will cover circular convolution its relation with linear convolution and the uses of dft in connection to the lti system outputs